Good morning and welcome to East Side Center in East Peoria. One team will go home a Class 1A softball state champion. Illini Bluffs appearing in its first ever state championship in softball. Meanwhile, Goreville is seeking its third state title in the last seven years, and they are playing in its third consecutive championship game. Yesterday, Illini Bluffs punched their ticket to this game with a 5-1 win over St. Beat Academy. It took 12 innings for Goreville to beat Calhoun 2-0 behind a Cheyenne Walker two-run home run. On the scoreboard, the Illini Bluffs Tigers will be the visiting team. Goreville out in the field. Let's take a look at the Illini Bluffs Batting lineup, Hannah Hicks leads off. She's playing shortstop today for the Tigers. Addie Welsh, the second baseman, bats second. Starting pitcher Kirsten McCoy hits third. Michaela Ellison batting fourth. She's playing third base. Batting fifth and catching Kristen Graham. Lacey Pilgrim, the right fielder, hits sixth. Tinley Beecham, the first baseman, batting seventh. Hitting eighth is Sam McMahill, the DP. And Ashley Axoon, the left fielder, is batting ninth. In the circle, Lexi King fires pitch number one. It's a called strike one. King getting the start today for Goreville after Kelsey Ray pitched a gem yesterday. King is seven and six on the year with a 2.31 ERA. Fires the 0-1. Missing outside, one and one the count. King has 98 strikeouts, just 11 walks in 81 and two-thirds innings pitched. Counts 1-1 on Hannah Hicks, the shortstop. That pitch misses the plate, 2-1 count. Hicks hitting 419 on the season with 36 hits in 86 at-bats. The junior shortstop went two for four yesterday. Pitch misses outside, Hicks ahead, three and one. Hicks drove in a pair of runs for Illini Bluffs, scored once, also stole a base, hit her 15th double of the season. 3-1 pitch, right down the middle, and the count is full on junior shortstop Hannah Hicks. Addie Welsh on deck for Illini Bluffs. The 3-2 pitch. And misses up high, ball four. Lead off walk for Illini Bluffs. Addie Welsh steps to the plate. Five foot five sophomore, second baseman, batting 4-12 on the year. Welsh with 35 hits in 85 at bats this spring. Shows bunt, ball gets away. That allows Hicks to take second base. Takes a hard turn, but she will not advance to third. So Hicks moves up on that wild pitch and the count's 1-0 on Addie Welsh. Welsh yesterday went 0 for 3. Did drive in a run on a walk. The 1-0 pitch. Misses up high and Hicks will take third base, no throw. And just 60 feet away is leadoff hitter Hannah Hicks. Counts 2-0 oh on Welsh. Cold strike, it's 2-1. Pitch grounded over to second base, and it will drive in a run. RBI ground out for Addie Welsh. Hicks comes in to score on the 4-3 put out. Hello, 
Pitcher Kirsten McCoy now batting with one away. Alani Bluff strikes first here in the state championship game. Chopper in front of the plate. Foul ball. Hannah Hicks led off with a walk. She took second base on a wild pitch. Moved up to third on the uncontested no throw to third. And she scores on the ground out by Addie Welsh. A one to McCoy. Hits her on the arm. And McCoy is the second base runner for the Tigers. Next batter will be Michaela Ellison. Games moved up today due to impending weather. Forecast of thunderstorms this afternoon. Highs expected to reach 85. 68 degrees currently. Throw down to second and sliding in safely is McCoy on the stolen base. Ellison hitting 256 this year. Called strike one and one. She went one for four in yesterday's semifinal. One RBI. Ellison, a junior third baseman. Puts that ball into play. Grounded over to third. And the lead runner gets back in safely. That'll be a fielder's choice for Ellison. And McCoy was able to slide back into second base. And with one out and two on, catcher Kristen Graham now bats. Graham, a 5'6 freshman, one of five freshmen in this starting lineup for Illini Bluffs. And she powers that over to short, tries to double him off. McCoy again back in safely to second. And there are now two outs. Pilgrim the batter. She is Illini Bluff's right fielder, 5'7 junior. Not a senior on this Illini Bluff's roster. Dribbles it back over to the pitcher, and King fields it for the one to three put out. Alani Bluffs strikes first as Hannah Hicks, the leadoff hitter, reaches on a walk. She comes around to score on Welsh's RBI ground out. It's one nothing in the first inning on the NFHS Network. This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carryout is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. You're watching the IHSA state championship in 1A softball on the NFHS Network. Online, nfhsnetwork.com slash IHSA. Goreville comes to bat here in the bottom of the first inning. Leading off will be Peyton Sopchek, the third baseman. Lexi King bats second, today's starting pitcher. Batting third is second baseman Kelsey Ray. Abby King, or uh, Sam Licka hits fourth, the shortstop. Abby King batting fifth. She's catching today. DP Cheyenne Walker hits sixth. Hitting seventh is Chloe Walliver, the first baseman. Kylie Massey, the center fielder, bats eighth. And Adriana Lick of the right fielder, batting ninth for Goreville. Kirsten McCoy takes her warm-up pitches. The 5'8 freshman has a 
season record of 12 and 2 with a 1.32 ERA. 100 strikeouts and 17 walks. McCoy with 84 and two thirds innings on the year. Soap check ready to step in and face McCoy, who was the winning pitcher yesterday. Tossing seven innings, allowing one run on three hits, struck out five, and did not walk a batter. First pitch, grounded over to third. It's misplayed, and shortstop Hannah Hicks able to make the backup play, but the throw is not in time. That'll be an E5, allowing Soap Check to reach base. Here it is again. Grounded out and just misplayed over at third base. And both teams get their leadoff hitters on base here in the first inning. It resulted in a run for Illini Bluffs. There's the throw to second in time for the double play. The Illini Bluffs defense makes up for that error. Let's see it again. Grounder over to short. And it's a 6-3 to three double play. Two outs of the batter, Kelsey Ray. Ray at second base defensively today. Foul ball down the first baseline. She was yesterday's starting pitcher. Went 12 innings, allowing zero runs in the 12-inning shutout. Only two hits allowed by Ray. She struck out 18 batters and did not walk one. Swings and misses on that pitch by McCoy. It's an 0-2 count. At the plate yesterday, Ray went 0 for 4. Her batting average on the season, 344. Counts 0-2. And, and swing and a miss. Strike three. Goreville gets the leadoff runner on base on the error, but a double play and a strikeout ends the first inning with Illini Bluffs on top of Goreville. 1-0 in the IHSA Class 1A championship game. a civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. You're watching the IHSA Class 1A Softball State Championship from Eastside Center. Right there is Illini Bluffs head coach Nancy Meyer, who won her 500th career game in yesterday's semifinal. How about reaching that milestone to punch the team's ticket to its first ever softball state championship game? Leading off for the Tigers, Tinley Beecham counts 0-1. Pitch misses outside, counts 1-1. This is the third trip to state for Illini Bluff softball. First trip back in 2000. Nancy Meyer, the head coach, they took home a fourth place trophy. That was back in the two class era. And in 2013, the Tigers also with a fourth place trophy. Counts two and one on first baseman Tinley Beecham, hitting 237 on the year. Puts the ball in play over to second base. And that came up and hit Ray in the face mask. Took the, the mask off. That'll be an infield single for Tinley Beecham. Hard hit ball and it took a late bounce right into the face of Kelsey Ray. 
Nice recovery and a good stop by Ray at second base. And Sam McMahill, the batter. McMahill hitting 294. That's a foul ball on the bunt attempt. McMahill had one hit yesterday in three at bats. Improving her batting average to 294. McMahill, one of the five freshmen in the lineup. The 0 1 pitch shows Bunt right in front of the plate. It'll be fielded by King, the catcher, and that will sacrifice Beecham to second. Here it is again. Nicely placed Bunt spins just in front of the plate. Abby King fields it. Throw cleanly, but it moves the runner up. One out here in the top of the second inning. Ashley Axoon, the batter. The left fielder in the nine spot for the Tigers. Axoon went one for two yesterday, scored twice, also walked once. Counts 0 and 1. King's pitch fouled back into the fence, 0 and 2. Runner on second, Tinley Beecham. She singled and moved up on the sack bunt. Pitch just misses, 1 and 2. King fires the one-two pitch. Popped up, foul out of play. That'll roll into the section, fan section of the neighboring diamond where the third place game is taking place between Harden Calhoun and St. Beat Academy. No score in that game. Here's the one-two pitch. That's dribbled foul. And Axoon stays alive on the one-two count. King's 1-2 pitch. Drops in for a called strike three. And with two away, leadoff batter Hannah Hicks is back up. Hicks led off the game with a walk, came around to score. She has a runner at second in Beecham. First pitch misses the plate, 1 0. Beecham singled and moved up on the McMahill sacrifice bunt. Two outs, 1 0 count. King's pitch misses up high, 2 0. Alani Bluffs had to wait until Wednesday to get their super sectional played after Reigns moved their games on Monday and Tuesday. They beat Orangeville on Wednesday. It's a called strike, two and one the count. Alani Bluffs beat Lewistown in the Williams Field sectional championship by a 6-3 final after defeating Princeville 7-1 in the semis. 2-1 pitch by King. This is outside and the count 3 and 1. Two outs top of the second inning. Tigers up by a run. Three one pitch. That ball hit into right field, and the catch is made by Adriana Licka for out number three. It's a 1-0 ball game. Alani Bluffs leading Goreville in the IHSA Class 1A State Championship. All right, this is Adam, take two. Mark? I guess. <laughs> I go like this. <laughs>
The best part about playing football in Texas has to be the reaction from the community. I would encourage others to play volleyball or choir because you get to experience new things and do stuff that you've never done before. My reason why is passion. My reason why is pride. This championship event is brought to you by Hospital for Special Surgery. Thousands of young athletes have their season ended by ACL injuries. Learn how to keep them safe with our ACL injury prevention course at nfhslearn.com slash courses. They're watching the IHSA Class 1A Softball State Championship game between the Illini Bluffs Tigers and the Goreville Black Cats. Bottom of the second inning, Goreville sends the number four, five, and six hitters up. That'll be Sam Licka, Abby King, and Cheyenne Walker. Licka steps in. The six-foot junior powers this into right field, and the catch is made by Lacey Pilgrim for out number one. Catcher Abby King now bats the 5-5 freshman, hitting 323. King went one for five in yesterday's game, scored a run, 41 hits on the season. Pops this one up, and it's out of play. King scored her 37th run of the season yesterday, has 29 RBI. Does have extra base power, four home runs, 13 doubles, and two triples. She awaits the 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Counts 0-2. Look at the third base coaching box. Shanna Green in her 14th season at Goreville. Has led the Black Cats to the state finals five times, including a pair of state titles in 2012 and in 2017. Goreville played in last year's state championship. Lost to Windsor, Stewarts, and Strasburg 8-5 in the title game a year ago. Counts one and two on Abby King. With one away in the bottom of the second inning. Called strike three. Second strikeout for McCoy today. And with two outs, Cheyenne Walker will bat. First pitch to Walker is a called strike. Today's game is also available for all subscribers via the NF. HS Network Live mobile app for Apple devices. Download the app from the App Store and you can start watching live games wherever you are. A one pitch up high, it's a 1-1 one, one count. Two outs, bottom of the second inning. 1-0 game. Illini Bluff scored that run in the top of the first inning by leadoff hitter Hannah Hicks. Foul ball, one and two. The one two misses outside. Two two count. The two two misses up high. A full count on Cheyenne Walker. Walker provided the heroics for Goreville yesterday with a two run home run in the top of the 12th inning. Counting for both runs in yesterday's game that went 12 innings. Ball four, Walker on board. And with two outs and a runner on, Chloe Walliver. Walliver yesterday 0 for 5, hitting 224 this season.
This event is brought to you by Champion. Since 1919, Champion has created the durable, authentic sportswear you need to conquer your goals. As the official uniform and apparel provider for the NFHS, Champion helps athletes at every level make their mark, the mark of a champion. View our apparel today at champion.com. At east side center, Illini Bluffs holds a 1-0 lead over the Goreville Black Hats. Two, three, four hitters due up for the Tigers as we head into the top of the third inning. Welsh leads off. Welsh drove in the game's run in the first inning on an RBI ground out to second base that scored Hannah Hicks. Counts 1-0. Called strike evens the count 1 1. It's Welsh McCoy Ellis in this frame for Olani Bluffs. Counts 2 and 1 on Welsh. The 2-1 pitch, hit over to Short, fielded cleanly, and a good throw by shortstop Sam Licka for the 6-3 ground out. Kirsten McCoy now bats. She reached after getting hit by a pitch in the first inning, stole second base. First pitch to McCoy. Dribbles it foul down the third base line. Count so at one on McCoy. The 0 1 pitch. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And pitch hits the outside corner, a 1-2 count. A 1-2 pitch. This is up high, 2-2. Two and two. Two, two count, one out here in the third inning. The two, two by King. That pitch misses just outside. A count is full on Kirsten McCoy with one out here in the top of the third inning. Tigers up by a run, scores 1-0. Here comes the full count pitch. And that's hit right into the glove of Sam Licka. Nice play defensively by the Black Cats. And Licka has the two put out so far in this third inning. There it is again, Licka with a diving Number catch 13, at short. With two outs, Michaela Ellison bats. She reached on a fielder's choice in the first. Ellison went one for four yesterday with a run batted in. First pitch, ball, 1-0. The 1-0, fouled back into the fence. Counts 1-1 on Ellison. 
Schechter swing. And the appeal down to first didn't go. Umpires today behind the plate is Karen Free. First base umpire Anthony Swat and Chuck Frischer is your umpire at third base this morning. Counts two and one on Ellison. King's pitch fouled back into the fence. And it's 2-2. Two -two. And the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a missed strike three. A 1-2-3 third inning. It's 1-0. Alani Bluffs in the 1A championship game on the NFHS Network. I had a civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carryout is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. Back at East Side Center in East Peoria, Class 1A State Championship game. Alani Bluffs holding a 1-0 lead over Goreville. That run scored in the first inning. Hannah Hicks reached on a walk, came around to score on the RBI ground out by Addie Welsh. And that's the only scoring as we go into the bottom of the third inning. Leading off for Goreville in this third inning will be Kylie Massey, the number eight hitter. Eight, nine, one, do up. Massey, the center fielder. Massey, two for five in yesterday's game. Hitting 171 on the season. Lays down a bunt, well placed, and cannot beat it out. Nice play, five to three on the bunt. Five to four, second baseman covering first. And with one out, it'll be Adriana Licka. Shows bunt, pitch misses high and inside. Licka hitting 440 on the year, 48 hits. Licka is the best bunter and slap hitter on this Goreville team. The 1 0 pitch, and that is hit into shallow center field, a base hit for Adriana Licka. Peyton Sobchak back to the plate. Sobchak 0 for 1 today. She did reach on an error in the first inning. Sobchak went 3 for 6 in yesterday's semifinal. Sobchak a 5'7 junior. Awaits the 0-1 from McCoy. This is down low. Goreville won the Johnston City Super Sectional Monday, beating Marissa 8-1. They played in the Steelville Sectional, beating the hosts 11-2 in the opener and El Verado 14-0 in the championship. Goreville hosted a regional and beat 
Wolf Lake 15-0 in the regional title game. Counts one and two on soap check. And that's a called strike three. And the second out of the third. Lexi King batting. King hit into a 6-3 double play to end the first inning. Counts 0-1. It's a called strike 0-2 on King. The 0-2 is fouled down the third baseline. McCoy fires the 0-2. Grounded right back up the middle. Fielded in time. Four to three. Three innings complete. It's a lot. My bluffs one Goreville zero. The class 1A softball championship. The NFHS Learning Center is the leader in online education for the interscholastic community. At NFHSLearn.com, you can find over 60 courses for coaches, administrators, officials, parents, students, and performing arts programs, including over 25 free courses, such as concussion in sports, heat illness prevention, sudden cardiac arrest, and protecting students from abuse. For more information, visit the NFHS Learning Center. This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carry out is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. You're watching live coverage of the IHSA 1A softball state championship game on the NFHS network. NFHSnetwork.com slash IHSA is your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois high school championship action. Top of the fourth inning, leading off Kristen Graham for the Tigers of Illini Bluffs. First pitch strike to Graham. Graham popped out to short in the first inning. That pitch misses, one and one the count. The 1-1 one, one pitch. Misses up high, 2-1 the count. Graham went 0 for 3 in yesterday's game. Called strike 2 and 2. 5-6 freshman hitting 320 on the year. Three home runs, seven doubles, and three triples. Counts 2-2 two -two on Kristen Graham. Called strike three. Back-to-back -back strikeouts by King. And she has three punch outs today. One out, Lacey Pilgrim the batter. Pilgrim grounded out back to the pitcher King in the first inning. First pitch strike. If you're in a hurry but want a fresh, affordable meal to serve your family or friends, Biagi's Pronto Packs make it easy to enjoy an authentic Italian meal at home 
or on the go. Perfectly sized to serve four to five people. This ball dribbled back to the pitcher. King fields it and ground out to the pitcher, one to four. Two outs and we'll see it again. High bounce, McCoy able to catch it. Throw it cleanly over to first for the second out of the inning. Now batting Tinley Beecham with two outs. Those Biagi's Pronto packs are perfectly sized to serve four to five people. They start at just $30. Includes your choice of pasta or two pizzas with the house or Caesar salad and freshly baked Biagi's bread. Count is now 2-0 and on Tinley Beecham. Two away here in the top of the fourth inning. Kings 2-0. Chopper back to the pitcher. King once again. And that ends the top of the fourth. A 1-2-3 frame. Alani Bluffs 1, Goreville 0 in the Class 1A Softball State Championship game. Leading off the Goreville fourth inning will be Kelsey Ray, the second baseman, is 0 for 1. Chopper back, and that's a pop out to the pitcher, Kirsten McCoy, for out number one. Sam Licka bats. Licka is 0 for 1. She flied out to right field in the second inning. First pitch misses away, 1 0. Pitch inside, 2 0. Sam Licka is one of the four juniors at Goreville who have participated in every softball state championship since sixth grade. Licka pops this one up left field and the catch is made by the shortstop Hannah Hicks. What a play. Let's see it again. High pop fly left field. Look at Hannah Hicks the shortstop reaching out and able to pull it in and make the second out of the inning. Amazing. And with two outs, the batter, Abby King. And King is hit and will take a base. One on, two out, and batting will be Cheyenne Walker. Going back to that junior class, Sam and Adriana Licka, Peyton Sobchak, Kelsey Ray, they participated in every softball state final since sixth grade between IESA and IHSA. The four juniors have been three-year varsity players. They're making their third consecutive state championship game appearance. 
Goreville last year took second place, falling to Windsor Stu Strass, and they won the 2017 state title. Two outs on the Black Cats here in the fourth inning. Abby King at first base. She was just checked over after getting hit in the helmet. That was following an amazing play defensively by Illini Bluff shortstop Hannah Hicks on the pop fly off the bat of Sam Licka. First pitch strike to Walker. Walker reached on a walk in the second inning. Counts 0-1. McCoy's pitch gets away. And that will allow Abby King to take second base on the wild pitch. One one count with two outs on Cheyenne Walker. Goreville has a runner in scoring position for the first time today. The one one. Up high and inside, 2-1 count. King is the fourth base runner for Goreville today. Chopper back to McCoy. She fields it, and that's out number three. It remains 1-0. Alani Bluffs on top of Goreville. You're watching the IHSA Class 1A Softball State Championship on the NFHS Network. I had a civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carryout is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. Back at Eastside Center, the Class 1A Softball State Championship, Goreville and Illini Bluffs. The Tigers from Illini Bluffs hold a 1-0 lead, and they will come to bat here in the top of the fifth inning. 8-9-1 hitters due up, McMahill, Axoon, and Hicks. McMahill laid down a sacrifice bunt in the second. First pitch by King. It's a called strike. Counts 0 and 1. The 0 1 pitch went around 0 and 2. The 0 2 pitch. This is outside, one and two the count. The one two pitch called strike three. Four strikeouts for Lexi King today. Ashley Axu now batting. She's 0 for 1, struck out in the second. Pops this one up, and it will stay in the field of play, and the catch is made by Abby King. King, the catcher, makes a nice play behind home plate in foul territory, out number two. Back to the top of the order, it's Hannah Hicks. Hicks 0 for 1 today with a run scored. Hicks walked in the first inning. 
advanced to second on a wild pitch and eventually scored on an RBI ground out off the bat of Addy Welsh. Hicks at her last at bat, flied out to right field. And what a play she made defensively in the bottom of the fourth. Over to second, and it's a four to three ground out, a one, two, three, fifth. Illini Bluffs one, Goreville zero. You're watching the 1A championship game on the NFHS Network. civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. You're watching live coverage of the IHSA Softball Championships on the NFHS Network. Online, nfhsnetwork.com slash IHSA, your destination for the most comprehensive coverage of Illinois High School Championship action. Bottom of the fifth inning, Goreville's 7-8-9 hitters due up. Chloe Walliver, Kylie Massey, and Adriana Licka. First pitch strike to Walliver. She's 0 for 1 today. Grounded out back to McCoy, the pitcher, in the second. McCoy's pitch popped up over to second base. Fielded cleanly by the second baseman, Addie Welsh. And with one away, center fielder Kylie Massey bats. Massey grounded out in the third. First pitch went around, strike one. Goreville, no strangers to East Peoria or Peoria. It's the ninth time in 10 years Goreville has been up here in the baseball or softball state finals. And one year. 2017, both squads were in town. Dates back to 2010, baseball took a second place finish. Baseball team came back in 2011 with a third place finish. In 2012, softball won the state title and they came back for a third place finish in 2013. Baseball won a state championship in 2016. It was softball turns to bring home a title in 2017. That same season, baseball won third. And the teams were back again a year ago with a second place finish for Goreville softball and baseball last season took home a third place trophy. The count's 2-2 on Massey. Another foul ball and Massey stays alive. One out here in the bottom of the fifth. McCoy prepares the 2-2. And it's slapped back to McCoy. She fields it, and it's a 1-3 ground out. Two down. And the batter will be Adriana Licka. Goreville has had just four base runners. Bunch showing there by Licka. They've had one base runner in each inning. 
Sopchak reached on an error in the first. Cheyenne Walker walked in the second. Adriana Licka singled in the third. And Abby King was hit by a pitch in the fourth. King would reach second on a wild pitch. And that was the only runner that reached scoring position today for the Black Cats. Here's the 0-2 up high, one and two the count on Licka. Licka has Goreville's only hit today. A single in the third. McCoy's 1-2 pitch outside, 2-2. Two and two. Schedule was changed today due to a forecast of thunderstorms this afternoon. That pitch misses inside, and the count is full. The 1A third place game going on in the next Diamond Dover. That's scoreless in the fifth between Harden, Calhoun, and St. Bede. A swinging strike three by Licka, and it's another one, two, three innings. Five complete, and it's 1-0 Alani Bluffs on the NFHS Network. Back at Eastside Center, East Peoria, Goreville and Alani Bluffs playing for a state championship. Alani Bluffs has the 1-0 advantage here in the top of the sixth inning. Two, three, four hitters due up for the Tigers. Leading off this frame, second baseman Addie Welsh. Welsh 0 for 2 with an RBI. RBI ground out in the first inning, scored Hannah Hicks, the game's lone run. She grounded out to short in the third inning. The count's 2-0 on Welsh. Two zero pitch, called strike. It's a two one count on Welsh. Kings two one, grounded back to King, and the pitcher throws it over to first for out number one, one to three. Next up, Kirsten McCoy, the pitcher. McCoy is 0 for 1. She reached in the first inning on a hit by pitch. While Goreville has only had one runner reach scoring position, Alani Bluffs has had three in scoring position. Of course, the first scored, that was Hannah Hicks leading off. McCoy did reach second base after a hit by pitch and stole second base. And then in the second inning, Tinley Beecham singled and moved up to second base on a sacrifice bunt. Counts 0-1 on McCoy, and she lifts this into left field. McCoy around first, and she will get to second base with a stand-up double. That's the first extra base hit of the day, coming in the top of the sixth inning. And McCoy in scoring position for the second time today. Michaela Ellison now bats as we take a look at that double off the bat of McCoy once again. Rolls all the way near the fence. And McCoy is in with a stand-up double here in the sixth inning with one out. Michaela Ellison comes to bat. Ellison reached in the first on a fielder's choice. Inside, strike one. 
Ellison struck out in the third inning. Counts 0-1 on Ellison with one away and a runner on second. Here's a dribbler back to King. A high throw. That's going to allow McCoy to score. And sliding in, tag applied. So that'll be an E1. Allowing Ellison to reach. McCoy scores on the error. And Ellison is tagged out on the second. Kristen Graham now batting. She's 0 for 2. First pitch up high, ball one. Two outs here in the top of the sixth inning. Alani Bluffs adds an insurance run as Kirsten McCoy scores from second base on the throwing error. Ellison tried to take two bases on that error but was tagged out at second base. So the bases are empty with two outs and Graham the batter. That's a strike one and two on Graham, the 5'6 freshman hitting 320. The one two pitch. Just misses two and two. And the 2-2. Inside ball three, a full count on Graham. Two outs, top of the sixth inning. 3-2 count. Ball four, Graham aboard. Six. Lacey. Lacey Pilgrim 0 for 2 today. Counts 0 and 1 on Pilgrim. She's grounded back to the pitcher, King, and both at bats today. Called strike 0-2 on Pilgrim. Pilgrim went 0 for 3 yesterday, batting 333 on the season. Counts 0-2 on the right fielder. Pops this one up, and it's a foul ball. Count remains 0-2 on Pilgrim. King's 0-2 pitch. Called strike three. One run in for Illini Bluffs. They take a 2-0 lead in the IHSA Class 1A State Championship on the NFHS Network.
This IHSA championship event is brought to you by Biagi's, where carryout is just another one of our specialties. And by Busey Bank. Busey, your dream, our promise. Back at Eastside Center, East Peoria Class 1A State Championship game. And if you want a DVD keepsake copy of this title game, click on the blue Get the DVD button directly under your event video player, or you can click on the Buy a DVD button on the top right-hand corner of the NFHS Network website. You can also click the Digital Copy button under the event video player and download a digital copy right to your computer. It's a 2-0 game. Alani Bluffs on top of Goreville. The Tigers scored their second run in that sixth inning as Kirsten McCoy doubled and came in to score on a throwing error off the bat of Michaela Ellison. First run was scored by Hannah Hicks. She led off the game with a walk, advanced to second on a wild pitch, then took third base with no throw and came in to score on an RBI ground out by Addie Welsh. Goreville has the top of the order up here in the sixth inning. Peyton Sokchek leads it off, followed by Lexi King and Kelsey Ray. First pitch strike to Peyton Sokchek. VO1, swing and a miss, strike two. O2 count on soap check. Pops this one back into the fence. Counts 0-2 on soap check. And that's grounded foul down the third base line. Goreville plays a tough schedule. And how about opening up the season against the defending class 4A state champions? That's exactly what the Black Cats faced on March 16th in a doubleheader against Rock Island. The Rocks won those two games, 11-2 and 14-2. Rock Island was a favorite to get back to the east side center this year in 4A. But we're upset in the sectionals by Moline. Pop fly into left field is out number one. That Moline squad won a sectional championship yesterday, beating O'Fallon. Here's that pop fly off the bat of Peyton Sopchek. Nice play made out in left field coming in to make the grab Ashley Axoon. Lexi King batting, she's 0 for 2, hit into a double play in the first. And she lines this one down the first base line. It's fair and quickly getting to the ball is Lacey Pilgrim in right field, a single for King. Just the second hit for Goreville today. Kelsey Ray now bats. First pitch strike to Ray. Ray struck out in the first inning. Hit a fly ball back to the pitcher in the fourth. Counts one and one on Kelsey Ray. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. That's grounded over to Short Hicks. Makes the throw. It's going to be overthrown. And that's going to allow runners to move up. King moves up to third. Ray is aboard. 
So that'll be an E6 that allows Kelsey Ray to take first base and Lexi King moves up to third. One out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. The tying run is now on base. And for the first time today, the Goreville has a runner at third. Only one previous time the Black Cats have been in scoring position and that came in the fourth inning. Got the heart of the order here. Sam Licka batting. She's 0 for 2. A couple of fly balls. One to right field and one to shortstop in the second and fourth innings. It's a 1 0 count on Licka. That pitch hits the strike zone for a 1 1 count. Runners at the corners for Goreville. One out, and the Black Cats trail by two runs. The 1-1 one, one pitch just misses, 2-1. and one. Goreville's been here before, third consecutive trip to the state championship game. Alani Bluffs have five freshmen in the lineup, but they won an IESA championship going 25-0. 2-2 count on Sam Licka. Runners at first and third, one out. Bottom of the sixth. Count is full on Sam Licka. Lexi King, the runner at third. Kelsey Ray running at first. McCoy's 3-2 pitch. Foul back into the fence. And Licka stays alive. Count is full on Sam Licka. Another foul ball. Three two count on Licka. The three two pitch. Headed to left field. That's going to score a run. King is in. And sliding in safely to second on the throw is Licka. Ray moves to third. Two in scoring position. Let's see this play again off the bat of Licka. Powers it into left field. There's Lexi King coming in to score. Kelsey Ray slides into third. No one covering second allows Licka. Now a throw down to home. And sliding back in safely is Ray. Runners at second and third. It's now a one run game in the bottom of the sixth inning with one out for Goreville. Two to one. High school sports fans never miss a game. Become a subscriber to the NFHS Network to watch live event coverage, game replays, and highlights from high school sporting events across the country. Millions of athletes, thousands of games, one destination. That is the NFHSnetwork.com. We are high school. Runners at second and third for Goreville. One away. And the batter is Abby King. King struck out in the second and was hit by a pitch in the fourth. King is a 323 hitter. Went one for five with a run scored yesterday. 
Alani Bluffs has a one run lead. It's two to one. Bottom of the sixth inning. So it looks like we will have two runners coming in. That's 32 and 14 for Goreville. So the runner at third will be 32. Destiny Bennett. She'll run for Ray. And over at second base, running for Sam Licka. Will be Emma Vaughn. So it's Destiny Bennett running at third base, Emma Vaughn running at second base, Abby King the batter, one out, bottom of the sixth inning, 2-1 Alani Bluffs, Goreville threatening. King digs in. Pop fly, that is drifting into fair territory. Tying run scores. And sliding in safely is Emma Vaughn. Runners at second and third. One out in a tie game, two to two. Bennett comes in to score. And that ball just stayed fair down the left field line for Abby King. High pop fly drifting down the left field line and it stays into fair territory. Emma Vaughn now at third, King gets to second. Cheyenne Walker batting and she provided a two run homer in yesterday's game. Counts 0 and 1 on Walker. Grounded over to third, throw to first, and runners will stay. Two down. The go ahead run is 60 feet away here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Chloe Walliver batting. She's 0 for 2. Walliver grounded out back to the pitcher in the second and flied out to second base in her most recent at bat. First pitch strike to Walliver. The 0 1 misses up high. Counts 1-1 one, one on Walliver. Goreville has tied this game in the bottom of the sixth and they have two in scoring position with two outs. Pitch up high, two and one the count. McCoy's 2-1 pitch. That's grounded over to short, Hicks. Bobbles it, a run is in, sliding back in safely. A fielder's choice for Walliver. And Goreville goes ahead, three to two, as Vaughn comes in to score. We'll have to see that one again. Wow, what a play. Off the bat, Hicks looks to third, run scores, and able to Win the race as Abby King back into third. Kylie Massey now batting. Two outs, runners at first and third. Goreville has scored three times this inning. Let's recap this sixth inning. Peyton Sopchek led off with a pop fly to left field, one out. Lexi King followed, she singled. Kelsey Ray then reached on to E6. King scores. Sam Licka singles, followed by an Abby King single. And here on the fielder's choice, 
by Walliver. It allows Vaughn to score. First pitch, popped back into the fence by Massey. 3-2 Goreville. Bottom of the sixth inning. The 0-1. Hit over to Hicks, it's short, and she will not make a throw. Another run scores. It's 4-2. King comes in to score a chopper. And it's four to two, Goreville. Adriana Lick of the batter. Runners at first and second for the Black Cats. And that ball is a base hit into left field, and the bases are loaded. Peyton Sobchak led off the sixth inning, and she now bats with two outs and the bases loaded. And the Goreville Black Cats on top by a 4-2 score. McCoy's pitch popped up, and the catch is made by Kristen Graham. And that ends the sixth inning. But the Goreville Black Cats score four times and now lead Illini Bluffs 4-2. The Tigers have one out to work with in the 1A championship game on the NFHS Network. A civilian retirement, a military retirement, and a 401k. It's just a lot of moving parts. They had their auto and their home insurance with me for about 10 years. Having somebody that can put that picture together for you took a huge weight off their shoulders. Kim and Bill are so excited about this next stage in their lives. Let's start with your home and auto insurance, and we'll help with the rest when you're ready. Get a quote at takesimplesteps.com. Back at Eastside Center in East Peoria, we go into the seventh inning with a 4-2 ball game. Goreville takes a two-run lead after a four-run sixth. Alani Bluffs will lead off with their seven, eight, nine hitters. Tinley Beecham, Sam McMahill, and Ashley Axoon. It's like we have a Looks like we have a trainer out there. So a slight delay here as we head into the seventh inning. If you're in a hurry but want a fresh, affordable meal to serve your family or friends, check out Biagi's Pronto Packs. Make it an easy to enjoy authentic Italian meal at home or on the go, perfectly sized to serve four to five people. And they start at just $30. Pronto Packs include your choice of a pasta or two pizzas with a House or Caesar salad and freshly baked bread with that Biagi's butter for dipping. Or if you're planning a meal for a larger group, just ask about the party pan, sized for 8 to 12 guests and ready for pickup with 24 hours advance notice. 
With six Illinois locations, Biagi's carryout is the perfect solution for your busy lifestyle. Four to two, top of the seventh inning. Goreville leading Illini Bluffs. The Tigers scored the first two runs and they held a 2-0 advantage until the bottom of the sixth. Hannah Hicks scored in the first inning after a leadoff walk. She was driven in by an Addie Welsh RBI ground out and they tacked on their second run in the sixth inning after Kirsten McCoy doubled and she would come around to score on the error. In the bottom of the sixth, Goreville on five hits scored four runs to take this two-run lead. First pitch misses the plate. Tinley Beecham, the batter. Beecham is one for two today, singled in the second. The 1-0 by King. That is popped up into the glove of second baseman Kelsey Ray for out number one. There it is again. Nice play by Ray. She had a great game yesterday pitching. Picking up the win, a 12-inning shutout for Kelsey Ray in the semis. Popped up back into the fence by Sam McMahill. Laid down a sack bunt in the second, a strikeout in the fifth. And the count's 0-1 on McMahill. Goreville, two outs away from their third state title in softball. Pitch a called strike 0-2. Regardless of the result of this game, Illini Bluffs will have their highest place trophy in softball after a pair of fourth place finishes in previous trips. Here's the 0-2. Popped up, stays in the infield, and the catcher, Sam Licka, makes the second out. Three strikes to go for the Goreville Black Cats. High pop fly and... The infield there as Licka makes the grab. Two away, the batter Ashley Axoon. She's 0 for 2. First pitch strike to Axoon. Illini Bluffs could be considered a favorite next year. No seniors on the Illini Bluffs Tigers roster. Counts 0-1. Axoon pops it up out of play. 0-2 the count. And Lexi King, one strike to go. The Gorf Goreville infield meets in the middle. Goreville four, Illini Bluffs two, two outs, top of the seventh inning. Ashley Axoon the batter. The 0-2 pitch by King. Back to King, the throw to first to the Goreville Black Cats are your 1A champions. A 4-2 victory over the Illini Bluffs Tigers. The Black Cats win their third softball state title in the second in three years, the play that wins the game. Goreville, with a four-run sixth inning, wins the state title. 4-2, your final score from Eastside Center. The Goreville Black Cats, 1A state champions.